thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. We are deeply humbled for this opportunity to share our experience of, uh, of establishing a laparoscopic biliary unit in a community hospital. Despite recent advances in laparoscopic surgery, the biliary emergencies have, and their management has faced continuous challenges. The most common challenge faced over the number of years is the current two session management, which is associated with prolonged wait time, increased risk of interval complications, several emergency admissions, prolonged comorbid comorbidity, and of course, risk of exposure to preoperative MRCP or ERCP. At presently, in my country, the targets are missed for even simple management of acute biliary colic. At most places, acute cholecystitis and suspected bile duct stones are still being managed with two-session approach. The present guidelines for index admission cholecystectomy for patients diagnosed with uncomplicated gallstone-related pancreatitis are being missed. A recent North American study identified three contributing factors to this practice. Number one, local availability of ERCP service. Number two, lack of equipment. And number three, and most important, lack of skills. There's a plenty of level one evidence that single session management and laparoscopic bile duct exploration is associated with decreased cost, decreased hospital stay, decreased stone recurrence, improved morbidity, decreased number of procedures, decreased overall operative time, and increased stone clearance. Despite this evidence, single session management and laparoscopic bile duct exploration has been slow to be adopted. Over the last 10 years, the diagnostic ERCPs have been replaced by increasing number of MRCPs being performed. Worldwide, only few centers are currently performing routine intraoperative cleangiography, let alone bile duct exploration. We offer single session management for a wide spectrum of biliary emergencies, including gallstone pancreatitis, cholangitis, jaundice, acute biliary colic with deranged LFTs, and we believe that this is safe, the best treatment option, and is cost effective. Establishment of a single se session management for biliary emergencies required dedication and teamwork. Our service has been established for over 20 years. For any new programs to start, there needs to be protocols and targets in place which will need cooperation from department and organization to achieve resource utilization and best outcome. There needs to be available availability of equipment to complete this procedure safely. Training and teaching is, is central to the success of the program. These patients should be followed up regularly, which will facilitate research and audit. At our place, we believe intraoperative cleangiography as the first step towards learning laparoscopic bile duct exploration. As the residents become more confident, they are taken to further advanced stages of bile duct exploration. Increased caseload in our department for bile duct exploration helps to facilitate research and training for local Scottish residents, UK faculty, and overseas visiting consultants. For any new program to start, a single session management, there needs to be protocols in place. All patients with suspected bile duct emergencies should be referred to a single specialist billing firm. All patients who are fit for general anesthesia should undergo index admission surgery. Patients who are unfit for surgery should be discussed in detail with the biliary team before proceeding for an ERCP. The equipment you require to perform an IOC involves a clangiogram, cannula, 5F ureteric catheter, and fluoroscopy machine, as previously discussed by several speakers. For bile duct exploration, you require a cholidocoscope, stone extraction kits, drains, biliary stents, and ultrasound lithotriptor. We perform a standard four-port technique uh, for interoperative cleangiography and use a right upper quadrant port employing a five French ureteric catheter. The placement and angulation of the ports is crucial to the ease of performing an IOC and a subsequent bile duct exploration. We have two stacks with stain theater all along the procedures. We have got a fluoroscopy machine which is parked just outside the theater and we have got a cholidocoscope and two on standby for each operation. We have recently published our data of 3,600 consecutive series of intraoperative cleangiographies and have identified abnormalities in, in approximately 30% of our cases. So this data has been increased now up to 4,500 patients and more than 1,000 laparoscopic bile duct exploration. Initially, when you start performing an IOC, 
it will take you longer to do this procedure, but doing this procedure regularly and repeatedly will help you to improve your time management. And especially, we have looked at the factors that most people uh, say that is a hindrance of performing an IOC, and what we have established is that your close liaison with the radiographer helps to improve your overall operative time. We have recently looked at our uh, 1,000 cases of patients undergoing laparoscopic bile duct exploration. We are, as you can see clearly, we are performing in more and more cases on emergency basis. We have adopted both transistic clearance and cholidocotomy to, to achieve ductal clearance. We have used both T-tubes and transistic drainage uh, for patients who required uh, drainage procedures. Our current uh, st retained stone incidence is 1.7%, and our recurrent stone stand is 0.9%. This, is the, uh, this slide shows the median distribution of operative time that we have taken to perform transit exploration versus cholidocotomy versus cholecystectomy with intraoperative clangiography. We have, we have performed billy drainage in more than 45% of our explorations. These patients get a clangiogram uh, at day three and, so, and are subsequently discharged with a follow-up on the ward and the drains are taken out after two weeks. The main question is, is the single session management worth it? Our main rationale for adopting a single session management and laparoscopic bile duct exploration is based on the case load that is referred to us. More than one third of our cases have got risk factors of bile duct stones. And by adopting a single session approach, it has helped us to decrease the number of MRCPs or ERCPs being requested from our hospital. As, as a department, we don't have a protocol of requesting preoperative MRCP or ERCP. These are mostly for the patients who are referred from other hospitals. This, sh uh, this slide shows you the cost projection of saving that we have been able to achieve by not performing routine MRCP or ERCP on these cases. But this does not include the amount of in-hospital stay or associated morbid morbidity with ERCP procedures. This slide shows the, uh, the operative outcome of patients who have undergone laparoscopic bile duct exploration. Um, our, our morbidity currently stands at 4.5%. And over a period of time, we have been able to decrease the in inpatient hospital stay for patients undergoing elective emergency and bile duct exploration cases. Our episode per patient is almost down to one this has helped us to improve the number of hospital admissions, decrease risk of interval complications, decrease hospital stay, and overall improved in morbidity. In order to achieve this, there needs to be logistics in place for any new program to become su successful. We perform one quarter of our cases on emergency list. A further quarter of patients are performed on CPOR list, which are called as, which are semi-urgent list. And 50% uh, and of our cases done are done on open elective list with short notice scheduling of cases. Our current emergency to elective ratio is 60 to 40. In order to be successful, you need to have a dedicated radiology service in place. And there needs to be a nominated bell linked radiologist and their input is valuable perioperatively and postoperatively. The establishment of a single session management is a continuously challenging and evolving situation. For there needs to be there is an increased case workload referral on a daily basis. There needs to be an adjustment around your elective working hours to, to perform more and more of these procedures at index admission. And of course, you need to have an access to extra operating theater sessions. Since 2003, the ERCP service has been discontinued in our hospital because there was not enough caseload. And if we have to perform an ERCP, the patients are referred to a sister hospital. We recommend that single session management and laparoscopic bile duct exploration is safe, is cost effective, and is in the patient's best interest. It's far superior than a two session management. But for any new program to establish, they need to have a service designed in place a practice model and a departmental-wide cooperation is required to achieve a successful outcome. What can we do to achieve this? A platform like SAGES and EAES can help develop guidelines based on present evidence to encourage what used to be an, a surgical procedure within surgical domain to bring it back to surgeons. We should encourage more of our colleagues to develop and learn skills to do this procedure safely and effectively. And in the end, I would like to thank Sages, Dr. Sober, and Dr. Santos uh, for the excellent contribution to this program, and my mentor, Dr. Nassar, who has trained me and many of my colleagues for the art of bile duct exploration. Thank you very much. <laughs>